Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a fancy end portal room, considering the current ones are rather drab. Before I begin, remember, please like and subscribe, and without further ado, on to the tutorial. Also, this entire thing is voiceover, so please excuse any, well, lack of game audio. First off, destroy the silverfish spawner. You won't be needing it ever, and if you somehow do find a use for it, there's 127 strongholds on Java that you can use from even if you destroy this one. On Bedrock, there's even more. Either way, for the palette, use Purpur and Endstone. With their variant, you can get Purpur by smelting down Chorus Fruit in case you're having bad luck with End Cities. Then, we would like to have a fancy ceiling, which means End Rods, Black Concrete, and Black Stained Glass. Then, Netherrack and Soul Soil for our fire with the end crystals, which means bring some obsidian. Magenta, purple, and other forms of concrete will be required. Well, well, not required, but still. And crying obsidian is recommended. Once you have all your blocks, go into this room and destroy basically the entire thing. Now, we have an empty room, and what we want to do is Excavate a 21 by 21 sized circle using the circle generator in the description. It's a very simple task, although it might be very long depending on your location. Now, we have a circle in the center of the room. I've outlined it using some purpur, and our next step is replacing the floor with end stone. It's blast resistant in case you have any mishaps with end crystals later and it's quite plentiful. Also, go under the end portal and place down end stone because it lines up pretty well, although not perfectly, but you know, ignore that part. It's only gonna cause pain if you realize it, but very simple part. Now, your next step is to replace the walls with end stone bricks. Just place them down, nothing too special. And once you've been doing that, you want to go to the base of each wall where the purpur was on mine, although you might have not marked it, and extend it using purpur blocks, just like this. And to add some extra detail, go to the bottom and replace the very bottom layer with more purpur. Then we have all this going on, and I've worked on a small staircase. But first off, let's go to the ceiling. We just want to have an inverse of what we have going on. It's a pretty simple task, but otherwise we have some stuff going on. You can either excavate the ceiling or make the staircase to the portal. Adding blocks to either side and tapping, well, topping them with slabs will work good, along with some stairs on either side, and make sure that you can walk up completely in survival mode without flight to make it more convenient for you. Now, we have a nice fancy staircase, and more on the roof now. Just have an inverse of what we have on the floor, with the design of it slowly going upward, and then in the middle, you want to make a circle. But be careful, if you have lit the portal like this, you can see, of course, all of your drops are going to be falling in when you excavate the area directly above. You can fix this by just blocking off the top of the end portal by placing down some normal blocks. This will prevent a lot of mishaps later on, especially if you're more of a clumsy player. But, you can see, I've added more stuff to the roof, and I've started carving out a small circle on top. This is incredibly important for our unique roof design, but for the edge circle, we can see how it's very unpolished, just a very basic form, although it's gonna be changed later. We want to have this go up a little before we have the fancy roof in the middle. You can see, once I excavate it, it's quite tall, and I filled up that old dent in the side with crying obsidian. But for the very top portion, we want to go inside and then replace the walls with black concrete. If we replace it with black concrete, then, of course, it's going to look kind of unique when we have black glass over it and it'll look like a starry night. But we do need a transition, 
which means a little bit of per per pillars, per per blocks on top, simple things like that before you go to the black concrete. I've polished out the sides of the circle, but we can see we have a little bit of a starry night going on above us. It's an incredibly cool trick you can do by layering glass on top of each other in order to make fog, but you can make it even better by adding end rods. Cover this up again if you ever uncovered it, because it's going to get a little messy. Start from the top, not the bottom like I'm doing here, and you want to place end rods on the bottom side of these layers because, of course, it's going to get covered up later on, and that's going to be an issue. But we can see the finished result of having end rods scattered between the layers. We can see it looks very cool, as if jumping into the end portal so like a trampoline into the skies were presumably the end lies. I'm not going to get into Minecraft theories. You might have to do a little bit of changes depending on where everything is, and you might be nitpicking forever on it. You might even want to widen it a little in order to make sure that it's not just one cylinder. On the sides, add some pillars, because we want to turn this room octagonal, like this. Then, we want to remove the recessed walls by removing the back end and placing it one block forward. Although we kind of invalidated the circle we had earlier, still looks quite interesting. Then you can use some magenta and purple terracotta to carve some sigils into the side to make it more interesting. Now some basic sigils have been carved into the wall and we can see it looks a lot more unique, especially with some end rods and end, well, purple -pur pillars. This room is coming together. The final part only for careful players or, you know, trustworthy friend zones, you want to make some podiums for some end crystals. Because they are animated entities, not blocks, strangely. And, you know, that makes the room a lot more lively because there's movement in it. You can make a little podium like that, show you exactly how to do it. And be careful. You don't want to place obsidian right there. You want to have it one block up. Because, you see, if I want to have fire under it and I destroy that block right there, the end crystal is in the way. If you have a mishaps like this, pour water on the end crystal before shooting it. Then, we can see what happens when we do it correctly, and it looks absolutely fantastic. Although the rest of the stronghold is pretty dreary still, we can see this room is definitely the standout. We have the cool ceiling end crystals about, you know, in case you ever need to blow up one of your friends in this room. Overall, I strongly recommend building this if you go to the end frequently. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Even if you don't, enjoy the rest of your day, and excuse the lack of game audio, of course I'm getting used to this new microphone, but enjoy your room. Gearsaw out.